my name is Stephanie Key. I am a advanced practice nurse and a pediatric nurse practitioner, and I do have a doctorate in nursing. So I introduce myself as Dr. Nurse Stephanie. I personally don't think of ADHD as any different diagnosis than asthma or heart disease or diabetes. You know, we need to really decrease the stigma that's associated with mental health disorders and realize that we need to get children help where they're at to help them be successful for a lifetime. There's 6.1 million children worldwide that are diagnosed with ADHD and this is a diagnosis that can go into adulthood and it's across all races and ethnicities. Anyone can have it, and there is a very strong genetic link to it, so oftentimes we see it run in families, and, and that's just the way it is, just like diabetes can run in families or asthma. There's a lot of new research out there that's talking about the neurobiology of ADHD. It's not just a behavior problem. This also can impair executive functioning in the, the front lobe, and that can mean that children and teens may not be able to organize very well and stay on task and and that affects home life and that can also affect school and it can affect them socially too. There are basically three types of ADHD diagnosis and years ago we used to call it ADD which that is no longer a correct diagnosis so ADHD inattentive type is the ADD from the past those are kids who really struggle more with focus and attention. They're easily distracted. They may not be kids that cause problems in class, so oftentimes they kind of get ignored in the classroom because they're, they're doing their work, they're not causing problems, and then when the workload increases, that's when they start struggling, which could be you know third to fifth grade, sometimes middle school and high school. And then there's the ADHD hyperactive impulsive type, and then ADHD combined type, where these, these kids struggle with both inattention and hyperactive and impulsive symptoms. There are different ways to make a diagnosis. I usually follow the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines, which they suggest looking at the child as an individual, looking at family history, past medical history, doing a complete physical examination, ruling out things such as absent seizures, uh, vitamin deficiencies, looking at them to make sure that they're getting enough exercise and nutrition, but also using screening tools that have been validated, not only from parents and even teenagers, I, like, I need their input too to help make a diagnosis, but teachers, because the behaviors that we see need to cross multiple settings and, and we need to see that that child is struggling either academically, socially, um, or the, there's a lack of self-esteem regarding the symptoms they're experiencing. And there are many different management plans. And when I talk to families and children, I really want to individualize that management plan for that child. And it may be in the younger kids that are two, three, four years of age who can get diagnosed with ADHD, behavior therapy. Let's set up their environment so they're successful with consistency and routines and structure. And the behavior therapy can help not only the child learn to think before they act, but it helps parents to better parent that child. As kids get into school, they may need accommodations. They may need more time for assignments. A child may need a quiet testing area or preferential seating. And so those are accommodations that can help that child be successful throughout the school years. And in older grades, you know, those accommodations may change. As a provider, I oftentimes help write 504 letters for school. I'll reach out to school counselors. I'll be an advocate for that child and family to really maneuver the, the school district and that school to help that child. There are kind of homeopathic things that we can try, such as magnesium can have a calming effect. Omega-3 fish oils have been shown to be effective in helping the brain mature and grow and make those connections. And so that's a discussion that I'm certainly willing to have with families and talk about those options. And then their pharmacological management, things that everyone associates with ADHD. Ritalin, which is the methylphenidate family, um, Adderall, the, the 
amphetamine-based family, and there's side effects with these medications. We certainly monitor these kids very closely when they're on medicines, try to start at a low dose to maximize the benefits of the medicine with minimizing side effects, and we're not gonna let any child get addicted to any stimulant medicine. Um, we watch them very closely. We have close follow-up. We're gonna monitor growth. Please reach out to myself or one of our other pediatric providers here at ADC and we'd be happy to visit with you, set up a consultation, because our number one goal is to help your child or your teenager be successful and we can help them. You just need to ask.